Welcome to this week's I Can't Believe That Happened, your history podcast for kids or curious grown-ups. So I thought that we would start today with a more unusual circus act, and unusual is just because it wasn't traditionally what you would think of when you're thinking of a circus act. There were no elephants, there was no um, swinging from trapezes, but that doesn't make this woman any less impressive. Her name was Annie Oakley. And she was born in 1860, and things did not stir up easy for her. She was born in Ohio, and her father died when she was really young. And she was sent off to a farm. When she was 10, she was treated really badly by the people who were taking care of her, and she ran away and found her mother. So she supported her family by going out and hunting and shooting game in the woods and selling it to a local shopkeeper. And she was an amazing shot. Um, She was fantastic with a gun and her skills actually paid off the mortgage on her mother's house. And she went into shooting matches and toured as a champion. Now, this is a little problematic um, for me. I have, I have a teenager, I have children. Um, She went into a match and shot against a champion named Butler. And at 15, she beat him in the competition And he fell in love with her and they got married the next year. I I was struggling on whether I include that part of this or not, but it is part of history and that is what happened. I don't feel terribly comfortable with that part of her story, but history very rarely (laughs) makes me comfortable. So around 1882 is when Annie took the name Oakley and she joined the vaudeville circuit, which was known to be kind of... um, a very uh, sort of risque sort of um, entertainment, but she really distinguished herself because she insisted on wearing more conservative costumes. And at one of the events in St. Paul, Minnesota in 1884, she attracted the attention of Sitting Bull, who adopted her and named her Watanya Sikila. I am so sorry, I am horrible pronunciation, but it translates to Little Sure Shot. And she rose through the show business ranks and joined the Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West Circus in 1885, where she stayed for 17 years. Now, we think of circuses as kind of like a cool thing. This show was so important and so exciting, and it helped her um, become an absolute legend. But she was also able to see the whole United States and the world. Annie Oakley, with the Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West show, um, was even taken to London in 1887, where she got to meet Queen Victoria, who called her a very clever little girl. And she absolutely was the British invasion in reverse. She was all over the British papers. And that was um, that was really amazing. Now, there was a part of time where she did lead the Bill, um, the Wild West, <laughs> the Wild Buffalo Bill Show. And that was because she had a real issue with a fellow sharpshooter, Lillian Smith. And things got so bad that Oakley departed and left the show at the end of the London engagement. And she returned to the stage and she also toured with a different Wild West show. When Smith less left, <laughs> that's all folks, I'm doing great with pronunciation. When Smith left the Buffalo Bill show, Oakley rejoined them for another three-year tour of Europe that began in 1889 at the Paris Exposition. Um, I'm going to, by the way, do a whole episode of the Paris Exposition. If you follow me on Patreon, and um, there'll be a whole bunch of different interesting things that catch my eye during the seasons that I'll do episodes on, this will definitely be one of those episodes on Patreon. So if you can, and if you're willing to support us, head on over to Patreon and sign up. It'll be in the lowest level tier. Um, I want it to be accessible to everyone. This is a lot of really cool stuff that I don't have the attention span not to do. So you might remember in the beginning of this that Annie Oakley began life incredibly poor and had a very difficult childhood. And she was known for being so against spending money that she would actually siphon lemonade and carry it back to her own tent. She was known for saying things like, I've made a good deal of money in my time, but I never believed in wasting a dollar of it. She was an incredible person for giving to charities. They gave money to orphans, um, and she was uh, she was really fantastic. She did earn more money than any performer in the show, except for Cody. 
and she did supplement her income by shooting on the sides, on the side, not on the sides. <laughs> With um, her skills, she was she was really something in the the shooting circuit. It's absolutely worth going to YouTube and see if you or you can find anything about her um, about how she shot. She was the surest shot, and she was actually known for doing things like shooting the cigarette out of her partner's mouth. Like, the, she was unparalleled in her marksmanship. Um, definitely worth a look over. Um, an amazing person. So sometimes you might hear things about um, newspapers and telling stories. Uh, back in the early 1900s, there was very little that stopped news reporters from um, saying whatever they really wanted to. And I'm sure that's going to be another episode too, because there's a lot of talk about that now. Um, Back then, it was even more extreme with what people would say. Now, her life got kind of difficult because in 1903, a very famous newspaper man called William Randolph Hearst published a fake article claiming that she was in jail for stealing. Now, this hurt Annie tremendously because her highest ambition was to be considered a lady. And she did file a lawsuit against the newspaper um, for libel, and she won most of them and settled the rest. That was that was an incredibly difficult time for her. So in 1913, she decided to retire and with her husband, Butler, the, the man she had been married to for a very long time. Um, and they set up in Maryland and North Carolina, and she would give hunting and shooting lessons to other women and performed at charity events. And during World War I, Annie offered to raise up a group of amazing female sharpshooters, but the government ignored her. Um, so instead, she raised money for the Red Cross and by giving um, shooting demonstrations at army camps and all around the country. Uh, she died in, ni- in um, November 3rd, 1926. And um, her husband, who she had been married to for 50 years, passed away 18 days later. They, While their um, story makes me a little uncomfortable, they did have uh, what can only be considered an incredibly caring and supportive friendship and very romantic marriage. They, I'm not going to add a lot of it here in this podcast, but they really did seem to care deeply for each other and respect each other tremendously. So that is pretty much it for Annie Oakley. If you go to the website, I will have a whole bunch more information with photos and some of her quotes. She was incredibly bright and smart and very, very wise. So thank you so much for joining us this week. Um, This entire season is going to be dedicated to the history of the circus. It's one of my deep obsessions. If you support us on Patreon, I will also put on extra episodes about things that are not the circus, just things that catch my eye and I just decide I have to kind of do a deep dive in and explore it. So please head on over there and support us if you can. If you cannot support us on Patreon, but you really do love us, please go on over to iTunes. It's still the best place for you to leave a very kind review. And the other incredibly nice thing you could do for us is to share this podcast. And um, I Can't Believe That Happened is a baby brand new podcast. And we really do survive based on you talking about us to your teachers, your friends. If you're in homeschool, letting other homeschoolers know about this podcast, we keep it really, um, really fun. So it's a great episode and a great podcast to share with, with other people who are interested in parts of history that you probably won't get covered in your history class. Thank you so much. Hit that subscribe and come back to us next week because we will be covering, I forgot which one we're going to cover. Oh, I believe we're going to be covering next week, Charles Blondin. And oh, is he exciting? He was very, very brave. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to anyway. All these stories about these circus performers They were all incredibly well-trained, and what they did did not come at high risk. Please do not try any of these things at home. Please do not attempt any of it at home. Anywhere else, just my little warning. I'm sure you're all smart enough that I shouldn't have to say this, but just in case, I'm going to say these are all true history stories. Enjoy them for the stories that they are, but do not attempt any of them. All right, I will see you next week. That was my mom moment of the week, and thank you so much.